and Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this. It is a tender 8 port gigabit Ethernet switch. Okay, let's have a look at the packaging first. First of all, I noticed it's got sort of a, like a cling film plastic on, which I'm guessing is not very environmental friendly. Um, I wish manufacturers would stop putting this needless plastic on things. I know it's supposedly to keep the product looking clean, but it looks much better, to be honest, when it's outside of the plastic because it makes it look like it's sort of damp underneath the way the plastic sticks to the product. So please remove the plastic. It's not needed for the environment or the product. Um, going from there, you can see the switch there. It says it's 8 port gigabit Ethernet switch. It's made smooth HD playback. Um, you've got gigabit speed, plug and play, and then you've got a few different symbols down the bottom. On the side, it's got your different languages. On the back, it gives you a bit of information uh, about the product description. Uh, on there, it shows you what devices you can connect up. The basics is if it's got an Ethernet cable, you plug it in. Um, but obviously, you'll need to plug that into your modem or main router or whatever for it to be able to get the signal in the first place for the internet. Um, otherwise, You've got on there, on the side, you've got the main features, packaging contents, and stuff like that. The package contains one switch, one power adapter, and a quick installation guide. It also says on there it works on Mac and Windows 10. See anything obvious what says anything about other versions of Windows, but to be honest with you, it's Ethernet, so if it's plug anything plugs in through Ethernet, in theory it should work. Okay, so let's open this up, let's get rid of this unneeded plastic coating they put on the packaging again environmental friendly things not very good think of all the fishes and stuff like that what are dying because of this stuff okay so opens up pretty easily there's no seal on it so i'm guessing they use that plastic bag as a seal you open the packaging up and you've got your ethernet switch and again it's in another plastic bag why why do we need this it's not needed you've got a plastic bag in the box in another plastic bag not needed. Um, but let's have a quick look at the switch itself. It does actually look quite stylish compared to a lot of e uh, Ethernet switches I see out there. Um, so you've got on the back, obviously you've got all your ports on there. So you've got your eight ports there. You've got your power. Um, you've got all the lights on there which show you obviously each of the switches if there's information going in and out. Uh, and you've got power light as well. It says 10 on the top. On the front, You've got a little button there, it looks like a button. Oh, no, it's not a button, it's actually a screw. On the bottom, you've got information about the product, barcodes, so forth. You've got two hanging hooks, so you could potentially hang it on a wall or something along that lines. Also inside of the box, you've got your power cable. We'll have a look at the length of that in a few minutes. It's very light, there's not much to it. You've also got... Ooh, it said on the box that there was one instruction manual, but I see two. You've got a quick installation guide, and then you've got something what's got the model number on. And okay, it's basically all the compliance stuff and so forth. And in all honesty, why that's not all on one, who knows? But uh, there you go. So you've got everything there, there's nothing else in the box. Let's plug it in, see if it does what it says on the tin. Um, in theory, it's an Ethernet switch, so it should be pretty easy to use. Okay, so I've checked the length of the cable. It's 1.2 meters, which in basics works out at 120 centimeters or 1,200 millimeters. The box itself, so the width, you are looking at basically 14 centimeters there uh, from front to the back you're looking at 6.7 centimeters and the actual depth of it or height of it uh, would work out at roughly two and a half centimeters obviously if you've got cables in they're going to stick out a bit and take up a bit more room uh, but that's the sizes of that the shell of the device is full metal so this is a full metal um, design so i'm guessing it is steel um, which is pretty good because that will help with heat and everything like that so it keeps it nice and cool and it also makes it nice and sturdy so it's going to need a bit of hammer on that to actually break it. The recommended retail price of this would be £16.99 uh, in dollars and euros it's roughly going to be around about that 15 to 18 mark um, but yeah it's uh, pretty good for that sort of price and you get eight ports.
Okay, so setting this thing up should be pretty straightforward. You've got the power cable plugged into a plug socket. You plug it into the power. Funnily enough, the power light comes on. I'm going to get the Ethernet cable and plug it in what goes direct to our router. I'm going to plug that in port 1. Then I'm just going to plug our PC we've got on display over here to the right, what we use for testing. And basically that should be it. So as you can see the light number 1 is on and the light number 5 to correspond with where I've got the Ethernet cables plugged in. So in theory we should have internet on this PC over here. So excuse the motion of the camera. And obviously all the cables going everywhere from stretching to our router. Um, so let's have a quick look. Let's open up Microsoft Edge and go to Google and as you can see that's come on straight away and we'll just do a quick speed test this is using Google obviously this is the speed of our internet it comes in roughly around about it does vary a bit but around about 320 to 350 megabytes per second so and that seems to be picking up just as uh, it does directly from the router the upload speed is normally around about 18 to 20 or so that's roughly the same again we'll just redo that test um, you do get slightly different results using speedtest.net but um, let's run that test again and there you go, you can see it flying through. So over 350 on speedtest.net usually goes between around about 350 and about 380, depending on what's what. So yeah, 378, so that's pretty good speed. And again, upload speed is roughly between that 18 and 20 mark, uh, usually, which it looks like it's roughly going to be 20. So yeah, speed wise it's doing everything it said it should, so you shouldn't have an issue with video playback, especially at that, especially when HD video only requires around about 4 megabytes uh, speed. Um, we'll do a few network transfers and so forth, I'll hook it up to uh, uh, two of our quicker machines, uh, which have got solid state drives and we'll try and copy in some files over just to see how quick it is, uh, and you'll see that later in the video. Okay, so first of all, apologise for not using the screen capture. I'm doing it like this so you can actually see it's still the same machine we are testing it on. I've basically done what you can see here, an actual test uh, to see what sort of speed it transfers the information from here to our server in the back, which is also running the same program. So the basics is, we can see on here the bandwidth speed, which is what we're looking at is fluctuating with the first test run at 934 megabytes per second uh, the other tests also ran at 944 megabytes per second and that's basically the speed roughly what it's quoted for obviously a gigabit connection should run up to a thousand but obviously you always have interferences and a little bit of lags depending on cabling and quality and a few other things, speed of the machines, speed of the network controllers in the machines and so forth can uh, affect things slightly but as we can see it is running at the speed it says and it is a stable running at that speed as well. Okay so overall with this it actually does pretty much what it says on the tin it's quite attractive uh, for a network switch it's quite small it's very sturdy it's everything you want it to be it run its, runs at the speeds that it states it should so there doesn't seem to be any problems there the only real negative I see on it is the packaging itself with all the plastic um, which is one of those things that manufacturers need to get into the heads these days they don't need a plastic to protect the box and then plastic to protect every single item inside the box but otherwise, we highly recommend this product. Here's a message from our sponsors. Thank you. 
Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. Don't forget to press the subscribe button over here. That way you'll get all the latest news and all the reviews we do on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.